Number 8. Tel Kadesh Near the modern-day border between Israel and Lebanon, archaeologists found a mysterious collection of objects. Among the items, there was a clay figurine of Cupid, 23 glass gaming pieces, and two metal writing implements. But who did these objects belong to? It took more digging and some careful exploration to protect the objects, which had suffered some damage in the time between when they were buried and when researchers found them. But their persistence paid off when they located a fancy bone hairpin buried under the paving stones where the other objects were found. To find small objects like these isn't that strange, but to find them in one cachet really captured archaeologists' attention and imagination. So many items together usually only happened at the graves of younger people. So, could the items have been placed by grieving parents at the site of their child's final resting place? An archaeologist who was fascinated by the items decided to hit the books and try to find out what they meant. He found a clue in an ancient document that had been compiled in the Middle Ages. In it, a story describes a young woman who gave her prized possessions to the goddess Artemis as an offering when she became old enough to marry. Even though we may never know the real meaning behind the objects and who buried them under the paving stones, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Thinking about that young woman bearing her most prized possessions in tribute as she set off to become a new bride is touching. What are your thoughts? Do you think she got her happily ever after? Number 7. Gigantia Temples Did you know that a group of temples in Malta are older than Stonehenge? The prehistoric temples found on the second largest island of Malta are considered to be an important site of pilgrimage for the area's ancient inhabitants. But what mysterious rituals took place there? And could the island be the lost city of Atlantis? Predating the Great Pyramids and Stonehenge by hundreds of years, the Gigantia temples have a legendary past, one that is connected to ancient giants. Gigantia, which means giant's grotto in Maltese, was said to have been built by a female giant named Sansana in one day and one night. Dedicated to the Great Earth Mother, a goddess of fertility, the site was a spiritual place that attracted pilgrims from all over the world. They would travel from far and wide to see a priestess who went into a trance, became possessed by the spirit of the goddess, and doled out prophecies for those who needed them. One theory about the temples is that the temple builders may have been so knowledgeable about astronomy and construction because they were more advanced than others at that time. Strange, elongated skulls excavated the hypogeum of Hal Safliani on a nearby island looked very different from other people in the area at that time. But what does that mean? And why did they build these massive temples only to later abandon them and completely vanish? Like Stonehenge, there's still a lot of mystery surrounding the site and just how ancient people were able to move such massive stones. The megaliths that make up the site are said to weigh up to 50 tons, and experts think that they may have been rolled into place using massive roller stones, the size of cannonballs, that have been found at the site. Even the doorways and altars were made from massive stone slabs. Some experts think the rounded shape of the temples might have been made that way to represent the Earth Mother's shape-like body. But it wasn't all about peace and love at the Gigantia temples. The discovery of animal bones and libation holes suggests that ritual sacrifice and liquid offerings may also have been a part of the pilgrimages made here. Who do you think built the Gigantia temples? And could the strange builders be connected to Atlantis, something Plato wrote about? Given the fact that he described how the remaining structures of Atlantis were scattered across several islands, and Malta's temples are found on multiple islands, it's not that difficult to believe the long-lost city of Atlantis could be where the giant temples are located. Number 6. Etruscan Pyramids A team of archaeologists made a shocking discovery when they were working in a wine cellar in Italy. While they were excavating at the ancient site, they uncovered a mysterious ancient staircase that continued well past the floor in the cellar. After working carefully to explore the site, they followed the staircase and ended up making an even more astonishing find – two Etruscan pyramids. The tapering walls inside the wine cellar were the first clue that there was something different about this place. 
after following the sloping walls 10 feet deeper, they came to another hidden tunnel that dates back to the 5th century BC. As if that wasn't enough, they followed the tunnel and it led to a second pyramid. Imagine their excitement at making these discoveries. To find not one, but two pyramids is amazing. But there were even more surprises in that underground wine cellar too. Researchers also found evidence of an underground system of tunnels beneath the entire site. After painstakingly excavating two layers of fill, archaeologists found Etruscan pottery shards that date between 400 and 1000 BC between the modern and medieval floors of the cellar. The discovery is an important one that shows how the Etruscans, who occupied Italy for almost a thousand years before the Romans took power, may have used pyramids similar to those found around the world to bury their dead. What do you think about these secret pyramids hidden under a wine cellar? Do you think there could be more structures found under the floors of similar buildings? Let us know your thoughts and comments below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 5. Nabataean Stone Monuments Did you know that a culture lived in the harsh deserts of Saudi Arabia for 200 years? When researchers discovered a series of mysterious stone monuments in the desert of Al Ula, they realized they had stumbled across a long-lost culture that had inhabited the area around 100 BC. Known as the Nabataean, the people ruled their empire in the city of Petra in Jordan. So why did they leave so many towering monuments in Alula? Unlike other ancient cultures like the Egyptians, who built their monuments as separate buildings, the Nabataean people carved theirs directly into the rock cliffs. Their temples and tombs tower over the desert floor, but that doesn't mean it was easy to find them. Researchers had to use light aircraft and special cameras to survey the area and pinpoint the location of the archaeological site because the monuments were so well hidden. As researchers continue to survey the land, they have found burial sites, Bronze Age funerary landscapes, and burial structures. With not much known about the Arabian Peninsula during ancient times, the discoveries could have a huge impact on the history in the area and put Saudi Arabia on the ancient history map. Ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia get a lot of attention when it comes to discoveries, so this find is an exciting one for history buffs. After they surveyed the area from the sky, it was up to specialist team members to head out on foot, looking for evidence of animal species. And when they did, they came across something surprising. For a long time, many species were believed to be absent from the Arabian Peninsula, but painted rock art panels have shown previously undocumented animal species and vegetation that were around during prehistoric times. What animals do you think once roamed the deserts of Alula? Let us know in the comments. Maybe you'll guess what researchers will find when they compare the paintings to the animals that once lived alongside the Nabataeans. Number 4. Nan Madal On an island smaller than New York City, an ancient city once home to a deeply religious and sometimes cruel group is filled with stone columns so heavy, experts are dumbfounded. But the ruins of Nan Madol, ruled by the Sol de Lor people, were so terrifying that modern locals see the site as one that is extremely sacred, and most are afraid of the scary spirits that may still linger there. So what happened to these ancient people? Why did they abandon their city? And why, of all places, did they decide to build on top of a coral reef, part of the Federated States of Micronesia? The shallow coral reefs house imposing ruins, but there's one thing missing experts haven't found any art or carvings at the ruins. The island itself is made up of 92 smaller artificial islands that spread over 200 acres. Built from the 13th to 17th centuries, the buildings are now in ruins. But they were supposedly built by the descendants of two brothers who decided to start a religious community that worshipped the sea. The location next to the island of Pompeii, northeast of Papua New Guinea in the Coral Sea might not seem like the best place to build a community. So the brothers brought columns of black lava rock from the opposite side of the island to create the foundation and walls of the platforms and lodgings. But it didn't take long for the native jungle to grow in and around the buildings, making them look even more intimidating. Still, even with such an imposing political, religious, and residential center, that doesn't mean there wasn't conflict. Sometime during their history, 
the leader of Nanmadol, who was said to be a tyrant, was overthrown by an outsider who allowed there to be multiple chiefs ruling the land instead of just one. Even today, the system of many chiefs remains. But there is still a lot of mystery surrounding Nanmadol. Most Pompeians believe the structures were built using magic to fly the massive black stone columns into place. And with no evidence to show how the structures were built, the true history of Nanmadol is still something of a secret. Number 3. The Taulas of Menorca A tiny island in the middle of the Mediterranean is home to a series of 12-foot monoliths that have sparked fierce debates. The Taulas of Menorca have a hidden past that could point to religion, astronomy, or even a place for healing. One thing's for certain though, these stone monuments were built by prehistoric humans who had some secret purpose for placing the stones the way they did. The small Spanish island where the stone monuments are found has a modern-day population of almost 100,000 people. Throughout history, different cultures have called Menorca home, including Jews, Brits, and Spaniards. So why do you think these ancient people built these taulas? They are said to resemble Stonehenge. Their name means tables in the Catalan language spoken on the island, which some experts think mean they were used in religious rites. And when a clay perfume burner in the shape of a goddess's head and a bronze bull were found during various digs, the theory that the temples may have been a place where sacrificial offerings were burned in the fire pits to their god seemed even more likely. A prehistoric cave drawing offers another clue about the island's mysterious past. It had accurate representations of constellations, which would prove the place was a religious monument. By using the top of the Taula and viewing it at different times of the year, it coincides with different locations of the moon, making these prehistoric monuments a type of ancient calendar. Until researchers can piece together the origins of these monoliths, the true purpose will remain as mysterious as the island where they sit. Number 2. Chinese Terracotta Warriors One of China's greatest mysteries is the underground tomb of its Qin Shi Huang. What made the first emperor of the great country decide to build an underground moat filled with poisonous mercury? What secrets was he trying to hide? Born in 259 BC, Qin Shi Huang was the first son to the king of Qin who ruled over the kingdom that had been at war for more than 200 years. So it's no surprise that Qin Shi Huang would have an impressive burial complex. When the extended complex was discovered, researchers uncovered an astonishing collection of life-sized terracotta soldiers that were so unique. Each one had different clothing, hair, and facial features. But even though they had found 2,000 of the clay soldiers, Archaeologists believe there might be more than 8,000 in total. And the location of those missing soldiers? It's possible they're still hidden underground, but that doesn't mean it'll be easy to unearth them. The central tomb of Qin Shi Huang is massive. Experts have been working there for four decades already. It's one of the most elaborate tombs ever constructed. Huang is buried in an underground cavern that is the size of a modern city. But for anyone who thinks they can just dig until they find what's hidden underground, think again. Experts have taken soil samples around the tomb after hearing stories that Huang built a moat of mercury to protect his hidden treasures. And they did indeed find high levels of the deadly compound. The emperor was also known to take mercury pills because he thought it would help him live forever. So do you think it would be worth it to destroy the tomb in order to get inside and see what priceless artifacts the emperor left behind? Leave your thoughts in the comment section and let us know if you think the risk is worth the potential rewards hidden inside. Number 1. Al Hajra, Yemen Deep in the mountains of Yemen, a mysterious medieval village sits at the top of a towering mound of treacherous cliffs. Built with solid walls to protect against invasions, these sandstone buildings are only accessible through one main entrance into the town of Al Hajra. It's a poor village located in the heart of Yemen whose buildings, all built hundreds of years ago, literally hang off the cliff face. Getting to Al Hajra is a long and treacherous trek through the desert, and once visitors get to the remote village, there's only one way in, through a massive fortress gate that is just as imposing as the village itself. When travelers do finally make it inside the ancient village, they will see something strange about the buildings. 
the lower floors of the houses have no windows. But was this because they were so fearful of being attacked? Not necessarily. Most villagers kept their livestock and grain stored inside their homes, and it's another reason why the homes were built so tall. Because the area is so small, architects had only one choice when building Al Hajra go up. And they did, building a massive town of towering multi storied buildings, some over 400 years old that are sophisticated and advanced. It's surprising that an ancient culture was so ahead of their time. But would the views from the towering village be enough to get you to go to the top? Another surprising thing about Al Hajra is that the oldest copy of the Quran was found in the area, though no one knows how it got there and how it survived untouched for so long. A breathtaking sight that also includes another fascinating feat of engineering. The residence of the local Imam sits perched on a rocky outcrop that is not for the faint of heart or those who have a fear of heights. But if you can get past the trip to the middle of nowhere and are brave enough to pass through the fortress gates, you'll be rewarded with a stunning view of one of the most unique villages in the Middle East. Number 10. Magic Jar of Curses in the city of Athens, a magic jar that had once been used as a curse was recently discovered by archaeologists. The jar dates back 2300 years and was found with the bones of a dismembered chicken inside of it. The curse had been intended to paralyze and kill 55 people in the ancient Greek capital. Imagine being one of the people cursed to death by a chicken. I wonder if anyone really suffered when they were put under this mystical spell. The amazing discovery has revealed to archaeologists just how prevalent the use of magic really was in classical Greece. The jar was found beneath the floor of an old building used by ancient craftspeople. The building is currently a ruin, and the jar was found buried underneath it. Jessica Lamont from Yale University said it had the head and lower limbs of a chicken inside. Whoever made the curse also stabbed an iron nail through the vessel to complete the ritual. At one time, the jar had been completely covered in text with 55 names inscribed on its surface. These were the names of the people who were supposed to be killed by the magic. We don't know if the curse worked, it probably didn't, but it's pretty scary to know that the people of Athens used to run around casting curses on one another. Number 9. Shackled Skeletons 36 skeletons bound in iron chains were recently found by archaeologists inside a mass grave in an ancient cemetery in Athens. This is another creepy Greek discovery with the mass graves dating back to around the year 625 BC. There were at least 80 skeletons in the grave, but only 36 of them were shackled. According to the Greek culture ministry, these people were killed at a time of great political turmoil in Athens. They may have been involved with an Olympic champion named Cylon, who after consulting the oracle at Delphi at 632 BC, was told he should seize the Acropolis of Athens and overthrow the ruler of the city. I guess he thought he'd become the ruler and enjoy wealth and power, but it didn't work that way. It ended up being a failed coup. Cylon and his rebels were captured and killed. These newly discovered skeletons may have been part of the rebel group. This would explain why they were shackled and executed. Plus, archaeologists did some DNA testing thanks to how well preserved their teeth were. They found that the men had all been young and extremely healthy, suggesting they were soldiers who met an early death. Number 8. Maya Rituals we all know that ancient cultures did things that we find unusual or disturbing today, but they thought that their bizarre methods were normal and necessary to please their gods. Archaeologists investigating two ancient Mayan sites deep in central Belize have found evidence of just that, strange rituals. These sites both date back to between the years 800 and 900 at a time when prolonged drought was disrupting the life of the Maya. The two structures found were likely part of a ritual pilgrimage circuit that the ancient Maya traveled to give tribute to the legendary rain god Chalk during times of great drought. The Maya believed that it was Chalk who brought the rains. When they had drought, they thought that they had obviously done something wrong and that the god of rain needed to be appeased. 
To make matters spookier, the structures were found along the edges of jungle pools, which the Maya believe were portals to the underworld. These were the most popular places for them to perform rituals. The archaeologists found evidence of mass burning events, meaning great fires had been burned here, as the Maya offered praise to the rain god. No human remains have been found just yet, but knowing the Maya and their love of sacrifices, there are almost guaranteed to be skeletons somewhere in the ruin. Number 7. Ancient Cancer People died of rare and unique diseases over all of human history, but it's rare that we find something as jarring as this. The skeleton of a teenage girl was discovered in an ancient burial ground in Panama, and it has proved to be the oldest case of cancer anywhere in Central America. Her skeleton is 700 years old. She was buried as a part of a ritual in Western Panama. A new analysis of her remains has shown a tumor growing in her arm, and yes, it was definitely cancerous. According to Live Science, the girl died somewhere around the age of 15. She was originally discovered in 1970, buried underneath a heap of trash at an old native settlement in Panama called Witch Hill. At the time, the settlement of Witch Hill had already been abandoned for about 150 years. Archaeologists say the local people had probably buried the girl at the site because it had strong ties to her ancestors. She was discovered wrapped tightly in cloth and hugging herself in the fetal position, face down, with a shell trumpet placed beside her body. As for cancer, it's very rare to find evidence of this affliction in ancient teenagers. Most published cases of ancient cancer were found in the remains of adults. It could be that the civilization she belonged to, probably the Ngabe culture, believed her sickness was a disruption of the balance between the natural and supernatural worlds. So they buried her at Witch Hill as part of a ritual to restore balance. Number 6. Heaps of Skulls Archaeologists have uncovered 50 human skulls inside an ancient Aztec temple in Mexico. Mexican archaeologists said it was the largest number of skulls ever found in a single offering. These were uncovered at Templo Mayor, the most sacred temple used by the Aztec people over 500 years ago. It was where all the most important ceremonies took place from between 1325 until 1521 when the Spanish showed up. The 50 skulls were found at a single sacrificial site within the temple. Five of the skulls had holes drilled on either side, suggesting they were at one time hung on a rack. They were like Christmas lights suspended above the altar. The other 45 skulls had been dumped lazily on the ground. What kind of ritual involved cutting off 50 human heads and dumping them in a temple? Archaeologists aren't too sure. They think it probably had something to do with a sacrificial person being killed by a shaman, carving open their chest, and then pulling their heart. This was undoubtedly to appease the Aztec gods and bring their warriors great fortune. Number 5. Headless Bear a mysterious headless bear has been baffling archaeologists. In northeastern Canada, the Danish archaeologist Jorgen Melgaard discovered a small bear figurine without a head in the 1950s. The figurine was carved from the tusk of a walrus, found leaning against the wall of a fireplace in an ancient settlement used by the Inuit people. This was in the Igloolik region of the Canadian Arctic. At the time, the discovery wasn't that interesting to researchers. It wasn't until just recently that archaeologists were looking through Jorgen's notes and rediscovered the figurine, realizing that the discovery was actually quite significant. It was carved at least 1,000 years before today and could reveal an interesting relationship between the ancient humans who lived in Canada and the wild animals they found themselves in contact with. A headless bear figurine might seem a little freaky, but the truth is quite the opposite. The carving of the bear is like other carvings found throughout the region, often mixing different aspects of humans and animals. Archaeologists suggest this is proof that Native Americans, before the arrival of Europeans, saw themselves in a symbiotic existence with animals, with neither being better than the other. It's also believed that some animals, specifically bears, could function as mediators between humans and the world of spirits. Do you think animals have any qualities that make you believe that they might be a bit more spiritually in tune than humans? Do you have a pet who you treat as almost an equal? Tell us your thoughts in the comments below, then subscribe to Taltanic if you haven't already for more strange and exciting videos. Number 4. Bronze Age Donkey 
Archaeologists in Israel have discovered the scariest donkey ever. The donkey died 3,500 years ago and was carefully buried on its side in one of the strangest burials recently uncovered. The donkey was young at the time of death. It was buried with a copper bridle in its mouth and saddlebags on its back. And researchers say it must have been a pretty important animal while still alive. In fact, donkeys have been associated with royalty. We know they were treasured pack animals, helping trade caravans transport goods across vast swaths of land in the Near East and Middle East. This particular donkey was buried in the heart of Tel Harar, a Bronze Age city once surrounded by a deep moat and towering ramparts. There were also the bones of sheep and goats, discovered slightly above the corpse of the donkey, suggesting whoever buried this animal enjoyed a feast afterward. Nobody knows why the donkey was so important, but his burial was treated like that of a king. Number 3. Ancient Mother even throughout the centuries, a mother's love can last forever, shocking researchers who uncover the evidence years later. A team of archaeologists in Taiwan, led by the renowned scientist Chu Wei Li from Taiwan's National Museum of Science, were researching a Neolithic site in the area around Taichung City when they found the scary remains of a mother and her baby. The mother nothing more than a grisly skeleton, was found still cradling her baby in her arms and looking down on it. The mother and her baby were just one set of skeletons dug out of 48 graves dated back 4,800 years. They belonged to a group known as the Dabin Kang people, who first farmed Taiwan over 5,000 years ago. There's no evidence as to how these people died or why the mother was buried while still looking at the baby in her arms. It looks almost as if she died while watching the child, perhaps even trying to protect it while being buried alive. Number 2. Dragon Monster A group of scientists from Australia have discovered the prehistoric remains of a massive flying dinosaur that they described as a fearsome dragon monster. He used to fly over Australia back in the days of the dinosaurs, boasting an incredible wingspan of 21 feet. Tim Richards, the head of the team from the University of Queensland who studied the reptile, said that it would have been a fearsome beast. He also said that this is the closest thing humans have ever discovered to an actual dragon. In reality, this terrifying beast most likely wasn't a dragon, but was a pliosaur that lived 145 million years ago. It fed on large fish with a mouthful of about 40 molars for grinding flesh into mush. It had a giant skull over three feet long that enabled it to wolf down just about anything it wanted. But do you think it might be fossils like this pliosaur that led ancient people to come up with the idea of dragons? Flying dinosaurs did exist, and ancient people almost certainly uncovered fossils over the years. It's highly likely that when they discovered skeletons of massive winged reptiles that they theorized about flying beasts that rained destruction down on their hapless prey. Dinosaurs and dragons aren't really all that different. Maybe someday scientists will uncover the missing link and figure out where dragons really came from. Number 1. Halloween Baby The ancient skeleton of a baby was discovered at the Hill of Ward in Ireland, dated back 3,000 years. What makes this discovery so special is that the Hill of Ward is considered to be the birthplace of Halloween. The remains of the child were found fully intact at the bottom of a ditch. Researchers say that the infant was only 10 months old at the time of death, and although there's been no evidence yet that the child was used as a human sacrifice in some kind of pagan ritual, this is the very first place that humans ever celebrated Samhain, or what we celebrate today as Halloween. It's one of the oldest continuously practiced rituals in the world, dating back to somewhere around 1000 BC at this archaeological site. Druid priests used to gather here to offer sacrifices to their pagan gods on Samhain Eve. They would hold bonfires, sacrifice animals, and open burial mounds so that they could activate portals to the other world. It's not clear what this dead baby had to do with these early Halloween rituals, but chances are it wasn't buried in the sacred place by accident. Which of these creepy discoveries terrified you the most? Number 8. Cultural Similarities in Art When you compare the art from different cultures around the world, does something seem oddly similar about them? 
From stars and moons to themes like death and rebirth, some symbols seem to find the way into everyday life of cultures all around the world. Even though you might not think of architecture as art, similar pyramid structures found in Indonesia, Mexico, and Egypt show that even though they may be worlds apart, distant cultures used similar buildings to house their leaders and honor their dead. The stepped pyramid used multiple platforms and had a massive staircase as its main feature. In Egypt, these were the first pyramids built by the pharaohs, later replaced by the smooth side structures at Giza, which became the most infamous ancient structures of the country. But why were the stepped pyramids so similar to those found in other countries who seemingly had no connection to ancient Egypt? Another similar stepped pyramid is El Castillo at Chichen Itza in Mexico. Built between the 8th and 12th centuries as a temple to the deity Kukulkan, El Castillo looks almost identical to the stepped pyramids in Egypt. And when you compare them to the stone pyramids found in Indonesia, it's easy to see how different cultures shared a lot of the same architectural inspiration as a way to stay in touch with the spirit of their ancestors. Cultural similarities aren't just found in the way structures are built though. Paintings of the Egyptian goddess Isis are strikingly similar to the statue of a mythological being in Ecuador. The sculptures of the feathered serpent at Chichen Itza look an awful lot like the dragon sculptures found in Bali. Even though these creatures are located in completely different parts of the world and their beliefs are not the same, looking at their art and architecture, you can see how recognizable symbols and designs can connect us all as humans. Number 7. Sheila Nagig a strange type of medieval carving meant to protect people from evil has been adopted by feminists who want to remind the world about the struggles women have faced. Known as Sheila Nagig, the carvings would probably have been quite shocking in medieval times. They show a naked woman squatting and pulling open her enlarged labia. Yikes! Even more shocking is the fact that the carvings were often found on churches, castles, and gateposts throughout Ireland and the UK. Dating back to the 11th century, the figures were considered grotesque and a way to warn the public about the sins of lust. But others think they could be more of a fertility symbol and a powerful one at that. Given the fact that in the not-so-distant past, thousands of unmarried mothers and their children were horrifically abused at group homes in Ireland by the state and the Catholic Church, it's no wonder modern feminists want to take back the power of Sheila Nagig hoping to bring a more positive, empowering tone to the symbol. Project Sheila is a street art movement that tasks creators with crafting clay representations of Sheila with gold-lustered labia and colorfully glazed vulvas. The sculptures were then placed on buildings and at sites where women experienced oppression. Using this shocking symbol as a way to take their power back is a modern way of bringing the past into the light and showing how modern women are unapologetically sexual beings. Number 6. Hercules and Diomedes In Palazzo Vecchio, a palace built in 1299 in Italy, one of the most stunning displays of art is found in the Hall of the 500. The largest room in the palace, it features a dazzling display of murals by Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. Among the stunning gold-framed artworks, there is a series of statues that depict the labors of Hercules with one that continues to turn heads. In it, Hercules, the embodiment of Greek freedom and heroism, is wrestling with Diomedes, who was considered a tyrant for feeding the poor to his flame-spitting horses. But the most eye-catching thing about the statue? Both figures are stark naked, with Hercules holding Diomedes upside down and Diomedes tightly gripping Hercules' penis. Depicting one of the twelve labors of Hercules, who had to undertake the trials to atone for killing his wife and children. This statue is one that you won't soon forget. But even if it looks like Hercules is in a compromising position, he does in fact toss Diomedes to his own flesh-eating horses, thus completing the trial and coming out the victor. The depiction isn't the only one to show off risque art. In many Greek artworks, depictions of homosexuality are prevalent. The Pethanos Cup, found in 525 to 475 BCE, shows a scene of both heterosexual and homosexual courtship on the exterior, 
with two men intertwined in a compromising position, which was a common theme found in ancient Greek art. Even though you might find it odd, the artistic appearance of the phallus in ancient art symbolized good luck, health, and sexuality. Have you ever seen any of these statues in person? What did you think about them? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 5. The Pompeii Phalluses When researchers began excavating the ancient Roman city of Pompeii, they were looking for the remains of those buried by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. But they found something else that they weren't really expecting. A large number of preserved artworks of the penis. But why were there so many phallic symbols in the ancient city? Found on walls, on stone streets, and even above doorways, the phallic symbols are believed by some to be for those looking for one of Pompeii's brothels. Apparently, one only had to follow the direction the symbols were pointing to find their own happy ending. But others are skeptical about that explanation, believing they were instead a symbol of fertility, similar to the Sheila Nagig sculptures in Ireland. Perhaps these were a way for the local culture to get rid of the stigma of sexuality and nudity. But the racy sculptures aren't limited to ancient Pompeii. A recent discovery of a mosaic in a Roman bathroom shows an image of Narcissus quite enchanted by the size of his member. Given the fact that Narcissus famously fell in love with his own reflection, which he stared at until he died, it's possible that being in love with his prowess was his ultimate downfall. Number 4. Fountain of Neptune The Fountain of Neptune in Bologna is just one of a number of fountains that depict women holding their breasts. Created in 1567 by Italian artist Tommaso Loretti, it's located in the Piazza Nettuno, the main square of the city's historical center, designed in the Mannerist style, which became famous for its depictions of distorted human forms and exaggerated poses. The statue features a lactating Nereid, who was a sea nymph and the daughter of one of the many gods who lived in the depths of the sea, considered symbols of protection, regeneration, and fertility. The nymphs were often depicted with large breasts. The design was done by Giovanni de Bologna, who was well known for his work in both marble and bronze, and was influenced by the work of Michelangelo. As you can see in his statues, Bologna certainly had a flair for the dramatic. Some may find his work funny or crass, but they are considered a powerful symbol of female strength. Number 3. Fountain of Fertility, Villa d'Este Tivoli Another fountain similar to the Fountain of Neptune is also found near Rome. Located at the Villa d'Este, the Fountain of Fertility features a classical Roman statue of Diana of Ephesus, depicted with multiple breasts. Created in 1568, the statue shows the mother goddess Artemis with multiple smooth, oval-shaped bumps on her midriff, but there are some different interpretations of the fountain. Some scholars believe the bumps are her breasts, which would be natural given her symbolic position as one of fertility, but others believe the jets of water spurt from the testicles of bulls sacrificed to her. In classic mythology, she is considered the virgin huntress and protector of young girls. An ancient Greek city located in modern-day Turkey, Ephesus, is also the home to the Temple of Artemis built to honor her. Just one of many stunning fountains, it is found within the palace gardens, which is considered one of the most remarkable displays of Renaissance culture. Go for the slightly risque statues, stay for the ornamental basins, refined culture, and beautiful 16th century gardens the next time you are in Tivoli. Number 2. Priapus, the Fertility God of Pompeii while most depictions in ancient art of phalluses are generally believed to be about fertility, one fresco found in Pompeii is believed to show a painful disease that was apparently widespread during ancient times. The 2,000-year-old fresco of Priapus, the Greek god of fertility, is shown with a large and constantly erect penis. Found in the ancient ruins at the end of the 19th century by archaeologists working on a large villa, the fresco portrays the god with a disproportionately large member that had a shut or closed foreskin that was supposed to be incredibly painful to the unlucky sufferer. But why did the artist decide to portray the Greek god of fertility in this way? 
some experts believe it was done to protect others from suffering the same disease. While it might seem vulgar to depict a god this way, some believe it was the artist's way of warding off evil. Either way, the stark depiction of Priapus probably garners more double takes than the poor god would have liked. Number 1. Min Another god of fertility, the Egyptian Min was also the god of power and the eastern desert. Worshipped from pre-dynastic times, he was always shown in art with an erect penis. Various reliefs and paintings found on tomb walls and in temples showed him with his hand encircling the base of his penis too. Early images of Min are the oldest examples of large-scale statutory found in Egypt to date, which might be why he was so worshipped. It seems that many themes of sexuality and fertility are all associated with the god. An aphrodisiac known as Cosletus is also attributed to Min because it was tall, straight, and secreted a milk substance when pressed. It was also said to help the god perform the sexual act untiringly, a fetish or object believed to have magical powers. To Min was in the shape of a barbed arrow or a thunderbolt, both equally phallic. A cult to the god was started in the 4th millennium BCE with great festivals and processions held in his honor at both Koptos, modern-day Koft, which was a major religious and trade center in Upper Egypt, and Panapolis, a modern-day Egyptian city, Akmim. When it came time to harvest the crops, a statue of Min was carried through the fields, known as the departure of Min. It was believed the god blessed the harvest. At the festival, the men took part in a display of machismo, each trying to climb a pole that symbolizes fertility, usually depicted with an erect and uncovered penis. He usually holds his penis in his left hand. Normally, the seemingly shocking gesture is only apparent in statues because of the perspective used in two-dimensional Egyptian art. But for those with an attention for detail, they just might be able to make out the gesture. Thanks for watching. Which one of these cultural coincidences fascinated you the most? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like these. See you next time. Bye.